This is the Marvel Masterworks Vidcast, True Believers, where we cover all of the adventures in the Marvel Universe. From the wanderings of the Green Goliath, to the chaotic offices of the Daily Bugle, to the grim alleyways of Hell's Kitchen, and to the top of Avengers Tower, with your hosts, Adam and the Emerald Enthusiast. Welcome to another episode of the Marvel Masterworks Vidcast. As always, I'm your host, Adam. And with me, as always, is the Emerald Enthusiast himself, Donnie. And we have a special guest, Donnie. But first, before we get into that, how are you, sir? What's up, comic book fans? It's the man whose ring runs on fanboy energy. It is the Emerald Enthusiast back with a special guest. Indeed. Uh, so why don't you do your thing? Tear up as you always do, and we'll get going. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all beings of the Omniverse, please welcome back the cosplay darling of social media. You know her. You love her. This is Brooke Lee. Hello. Thank you for having me again. Welcome back. Um, <laughs> if you haven't listened to that episode with, with, with Brooke about a... What was it? it was years year? ago now, right? A year, a year or two. Um, you, if, if you haven't listened to that, shame on you and maybe maybe list maybe viewers of this one won't because or haven't because that i believe it was july of last year yeah that was, was it so a little over a year ago yeah, yeah i yeah. think so yeah so that was a dc uh, vidcast or so if if you haven't listened to it yet i'll excuse it if you're a marvel only <laughs> person but too bad listen to it because it was great. yeah there was there was a lot of DC stuff, yeah. so I, I could see Marvel people being like, "Yeah, I'm gonna skip it." <laughs> and she talked about uh, she talked about her Artemis cosplay. So don't don't. I think it was Artemis, right? Or yeah, it, I think I think Green we Lantern? did talk about Artemis. Yeah, so. it was Artemis and Green Lantern because Donnie can't get away from talking about Green Lantern. So yeah, it was my Green Lantern Canary, which is yeah, still, yeah. I mean, two of my all time favorite right. cosplays I've ever done. <laughs> right. And I, I bought the Jessica Cruz photo from you. That mm. uh, yes. That my debt's all here. Right. I need to reshoot that one soon. I only got a couple photos of it, and that's one I'd really love some some more pictures of. That the you know her the Green Lantern symbol that's on her face. I know this is not what we're talking about, but you got me on the subject. Hey, that's let's go. actually it's actually like a silicone mask. So mm -hmm. I don't have to like draw it on. I can just like glue it to my face, and it I just I love it. It looks so cool. So that's right. definitely on the list. <laughs> okay, so I'm. You can put, I'll get another photo of that. And I want a photo of you as Green Canary. So. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I will, uh, I will send you some options. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm debating. I'm trying to decide again, the Marvel people are like, get to the Marvel stuff. But regard, wait, um, I'm deciding on either a. Um, who, all, knows, who would think that we would talk about Green Lantern on this podcast? Nobody no, could have guessed. Insanity, insanity. But no, I'm deciding on it because they're all, all the ones I've seen are great. But it's like, you know me, I'm a Batman first kind of guy. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people are booing me as I say that. Too bad. Um, but uh, like you've done the Batgirl one, which was pretty awesome. Um, Thank you. The Nightwing one, which was pretty awesome. Uh, and the Red Hood one, which is pretty awesome. Um, so I'm like, okay, which one? <laughs> it's like, all right, I need a coin and I need to flip. So I'm doing <laughs> the Two-Face thing right now. Um, yeah, I mean... So once the, I choose, the the other thing is, if you guys have ever seen a photo you love, I'll just I I just get them custom printed. People can okay. request right. whatever they want. Cool. So, yeah, that's that's an option. It's it's the same. I I don't stock things anymore. I just right. get them right. printed when there's a request. So you guys Great. can really pick any of the photos I've ever posted. Which makes um, sense. You have a lot of options. <laughs> I I'm leaning towards bad girl, but 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 I'm still not 100 percent there yet. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm, I'm still on, and I'm, I'm still putting in for the Dusty Roads cosplay. I still think he's it would be not gonna dress up in yellow. Polka Honestly, that was like one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. I was like, that would be hilarious. <laughs> I, I laugh, but yeah. It's a, <laughs> all right, not, not not to piss off the viewers and listeners any longer. Um, so, of course, uh, we are about to in the second half of the show. Um, we are going to. Um, finish off our review of She-Hulk, uh, yes. specifically episodes eight and, nine. Um, eight and nine. Brooke, unfortunately, hasn't had a chance to watch She-Hulk yet, so yeah. she can't join us for the review portion. But um, in addition to all the fantastic DC stuff that Brooke's done, which we talked about, you know, 
just a second ago. She's also uh, done several Marvel characters, uh, two which, kind, well, one kind of sort of pertains to, uh, to episode eight, uh, mm -hmm. but the other one, she's also, she's done basically the Electra Daredevil, uh, and she has also uh, done She-Hulk, so that, that is very appropriate for our conversation. <laughs> uh, of course, the Electra iteration of Darede Daredevil hasn't appeared in... Um, in She-Hulk, but spoiler, Brooke, I have to spoil this. Daredevil, oh, I already know. Okay, okay. Don't worry. Daredevil, <laughs> Matt Murdock is in She-Hulk, so that's why it makes sense. Why not talk to Brooke about, about both? So... And I uh, say, Brooke, has your uh, training regiment changed at all the past year? Because it looks to me like you've gotten even more muscular over the last <laughs> year. And when you Thank do you. cosplays like that, I mean, it, it lends like more credibility to that. So it's funny. So for She-Hulk, I actually like lifted weights right before I hopped in front of the camera. So uh, my muscles were pumped during that shoot on yes. purpose. Um, okay. But I have gained, I have gained quite a bit of muscle. I just have switched over. I used to write my own lifting programming and mm. um, I just got really bored of doing it. And so I joined um a online basically program where uh it's called the sculpt you and uh one of the girls the the girl who started it writes new workouts every month and so it's like something i don't have to think about um and so i've just i've been doing that for about a year and then i also do um pole fitness now as well yeah. and that has been a significant i mean that's that's where my upper body muscle has come from for sure um and my core like it's crazy what it's crazy what uh what your body has to be able to do strength wise so that's what's changed there but yeah for the she hulk shoot i did pull the weights out of the garage we have a home gym and i pumped up right before and then hopped right in front of the camera and even between poses or something I grab the weights and just continue lifting uh because I wanted my biceps to be and my shoulders to be like pop in for it so um it was it was fun though I mean I've only ever done one other shoot where I actually had weights out and that was a fitness shoot so it made sense but yeah for She-Hulk it was fun to do um I've been wanting to do She-Hulk for a while mm. but the list is obviously for almost every cosplayer never ending and so you get to things when you get to them but um, She-Hulk was actually sewn completely by me, patterned by me. And when okay. I say by me, I also want to acknowledge that my very, very, very dear friend, Polly Zena Storm, um, taught me and helped me and guided me throughout the whole process. And you know what? Let me retract that. It was not all done by me. She and I split that project. Uh, and it's actually co it, it, it had, we both have joint custody of it. Um, so we, <laughs> okay. we will trade it back and forth, but, um, yeah, she she has been teaching me how to sew. Armor has always been more my forte. And so she took me under her wing. And I have I've heard a thank for a lot of my recent stuff that has been sewn by me. I mean, my Aqua Girl, again, DC, I will jump back to She-Hulk, but my Aqua Girl one I made like in a day, just mm. made it. Uh, all because of what I've learned from her. So I have to give her due credit on this cosplay as well, because it was definitely a team effort. Um, but we had a lot of fun, um, doing it together. Uh, we spent, I don't know, maybe a month just working on it here and there. Um, it was really fun picking out the fabric. So I don't know if it's visible in the photos I've posted. Um, but the white is actually a hexagonal, like white fabric pattern. I think you can see it in some of them. And it's just, I love the, the layer that added. And then the purple I ordered online and we used that for the accents and also the gloves. Um, and it was just, it was so fun to do. The bodysuit was very tricky to pattern. I mean, there's all those weird kind of cutouts. I based it off of um, Jen. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to look her name up. Jen, she did a special cover for She-Hulk. I think I have the, I think I have the cover saved, I hope. Oh no, I don't. Mm. Is I'm it so a variant cover? I think it was. I, I'm going to find it right now. I, I, love how, I, I, love how, I love how Donnie series. casually asks, asks that question because he's like, if it is, I'll probably look it up and buy it. <laughs> right. I mean, it is, it is really cool, but let me see. Um, Jenny Frieson. 
Okay. I think. Okay. Let me. Let me see. The reason I yeah. found that. It looks like her cover. Mm. I just now I'm now I'm now I need to know. Oh, I found it. So it's this one. Okay. Yes. Oh, right, right, yeah. So yeah. So I based the suit off of this one, which has those stripes down it. And then she's yeah. also got the sneakers with the purple accents. So yeah. for those, I went to Goodwill and I found a pair of like chunky sneakers and I taped them up. It took forever with painter's tape and then painted purple on oh, right, the right. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really fun. Um it was it was one that I learned a lot on. Um, you know, it was like my first time installing a zipper into a bodysuit, like things like that, where, you know, without guidance, I'm not sure it would have happened or it would have happened after a lot of tears and probably cursing and yelling. Um, Sounds like me watching a leash game. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Watching a hockey game. Same, same thing. So that was just, it was a really fun one to do. Um, we also, when we shot it, actually, what's funny is um, it was super, super, super hot outside. Mm. And we had actually already shot, I just shot my angel cosplay. So my angel, uh, Penny Newsom X-Men cosplay. And we were planning on shooting She-Hulk and Elektra outside. And me and me and my friend looked at each other and we were like, there's no way that's going to happen. Like this <laughs> is, well, I was trying to get heat exhaustion. Like it was just not going to work. So we set up in my house and that's why all those photos have like an edited background because we were literally shooting in my house. But it was really fun for me to do. I had never like removed a background in Photoshop or anything like that. So I had a lot of fun editing those too. Mm. Um, I only did green paint on my face. I always like to be honest about that. Like I did not paint my whole I body. Was, I was going to ask, I'm like, because that would be, no. yeah. Yeah. So one of my friends was kind enough to color match the rest of my body to the face paint I'd done. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so that's that's typically what I do for body paint cosplays now, just because if I'm shooting multiple things, it saves a lot of time. I always try to note it in my caption, just so like nobody's like, how oh, it does her body paint look so perfect? It's like, well, because it's not body paint, it's fake, it's digital, it's digitally enhanced. And a lot of people have asked, how do all your tattoos show through body paint? And I'm like, they don't. That's because I don't have body paint on. So um, mm. it was just, it was a fun one. And it was kind of a crazy shoot day, but we got some great shots and it was definitely a blast to do. I think my favorite shot I got was edited by Aaron Bailey. And it's the one where I'm like holding the car up. Right. Um, yeah. I love that one. I think that's my favorite one from the set. I'll definitely send it to you guys. In case yeah, you, you can send one that we could uh, we could put in and show on, yeah. the, on the video. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's kind of it's kind of and, and send me she whatever you want us to use for the thumbnail for this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. yeah, no, but yeah, I, I well, the reason why I wanted to mention that, in addition to the fact that we we're going to talk about the show later, uh, is that I know that from your last uh, time you came on with us, you said that one of the first comics you got was a She Hulk comic. So yeah. I thought that was pretty cool that 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 uh, uh, that you were able to cosplay that I, th I think that's pretty like almost like was, a full circle moment exactly it really was and that's really why I wanted to I mean I've been thinking about doing, doing a She-Hulk cosplay before the show was announced and then when the show was announced I was like all right I'll kick it into high gear I'll do that one now, yeah so, now's the time yeah 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 um, yeah but um yeah it was it was a wonderful learning experience and I would not have gotten through it if it wasn't for Polly Zena Storm man <laughs> she and I she has made a huge difference in my uh cosplay quality in terms of like sewing and it's just been it's just been wonderful we have a bunch of duo stuff we're planning um you know for the next while who knows when we'll get to it but we have a lot of stuff on our to-do list so you'll awesome. be seeing more duos from us soon i'm sure <laughs> awesome and the other one that, that i wanted to mention was your um electra as daredevil uh cosplay because for those who don't know there was a point in the comics where Matt Murdock was in jail and to keep Hell's Kitchen safe, Electra decided, all right, I'll become Daredevil. And it was a really cool story. Her and Matt basically had a, a sort of, uh, they butted heads because Electra is not averse to killing, Matt is. And so then she's like, fine, I'll try it your way. And it was a pretty cool, fun storyline to watch play out. And now they're both Daredevil, which is yeah. really cool because why, why, why do we have to take one away for the other one to exist. 
Um, so it was really cool, but I liked her outfit when it when it was first announced in the comic. I loved her outfit, and I think it was announced like a couple years ago. It feels yeah. like it was that long ago, but I it's remember at least a year for sure, at least. Yeah, at least a year because I remember seeing it, and I again I was reading mostly DC, and I was like, "Well, I'm sold." I was like, "I need to make <laughs> this, and I need to read this." And I, I like, it has to happen. Mm. Um, I don't know what it is about her outfit that is just, it's like one of the peak comic book designs, in my opinion. I mean, the way that they incorporated both the daredevil aspects, but kept stuff from her original outfit, like the skirt panels. Mm. I love the loose pants um, with, you know, and then she's got all the ties that she usually has. Uh, when she's in the the electric dress and it's just the combination was so well done and I love the way her hair is up and like tied it's just it's it's one of the coolest designs I've ever seen and I'm so glad I finally got to it I mean I've been talking about doing it since I saw the design um and I the first thing I did was I commissioned a zente suit pattern from cyan man designs who is just wonderful and so nice and just my favorite person to go to for patterns. He's, mm. he's awesome. And he does great work. So I commissioned the pattern and then I ordered my base Zente suit um, from, I think it was print costume official. And I got the built-in boots so that, you know, cause her, her suit, it all looks cohesive. So I got the mm. built-in boots for it. And after that, um, I basically just went to Joanne's fabrics. I knew I wanted, I knew I wanted more than one fabric to give it added dimension. And actually in the up close photos of my suit you can see the red has this almost like paisley print embedded in it but it's hard to see from a distance but it adds a little dimension and the black obviously has almost like a checkered look so there's like a lot going on so when I went to the store I knew I wanted like a plain red and then I also got this rubberized textured red that had a similar paisley geometric pattern to the suit and so that was, well, as soon as I saw that fabric, I wasn't even initially planning on using it. And I saw it and I was like, oh, okay, well, we're, I guess we're using two different fabrics because I need that fabric. So I, I brought them home and thank goodness, one of the things I love about um, the super stretchy fabrics like that and the way that they're, um, the way that the rubberized coating was done is you can cut them and you don't have to finish any edges. So like I was just able to cut and things were good. I didn't have to worry about um, running each piece through my machine to give it a nice finished edge, which saved me so much time on this. Like when I say this was not a super labor intensive cosplay, I really mean it. The suit, getting the suit done, I obviously didn't didn't do that. Um, cutting all the strips, you know, measuring them out. I did do this thing because I wanted variation where I cut one strip from the rubberized and one strip from the normal and then stitched them together so that when you crisscross them, you'd have both. Mm. Um, okay. I guess maybe the, the most labor intensive part was that hooded cloak thing she has that like comes up around her face. Yeah. So that one, that I reposted a, little a couple bit of work. your TikToks, by the way, of you yeah. with that costume. Yeah. 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 I mean, I love the way that cloak moves. That was, that was definitely a trial and error thing. I first tried it with one layer of fabric and I was like, it's not like moving enough. And then it wasn't like, it wasn't flowing. It was just very flat. So I had to unstitch it and then, um, kind of ruch it at the top, gather it at the top and then stitch through that. So it kind of hung more, um, more dramatically and flowed a little bit better. So um, that took me a few tries. And then one of my really great friends, um, he, he 3d prints and he 3d printed me, uh, the daredevil cowl. Um, and it was in a couple different pieces and, uh, I have started gluing, uh, my 3d printed like cows and stuff together with actually JB weld, um, because it holds so well. Uh, Nico and I, my, my partner and I use it on the motorcycles all the time. And I asked him one day, I was like, do you think that would work on a 3D printed piece? And he was like, I, I, yeah. He was like, I think it would. So he, he actually glued it together for me. Awesome. Um, and then I just, I sanded it. I used a bunch of Bondo all over it. Again, I want to say this because I've seen so many people not wearing like PPE, doing stuff like that. Wear gloves, wear a respirator do all of this in a well-ventilated area like sanding even just pulling the bono out contact cement all of that because 
you really you don't you don't want bad things down the road because you you didn't wear you know a respirator they're like twenty dollars on amazon yeah. just my little like psa but that's a good um, one Yes. And then just painted it. And actually what I did on the cowl, um, the cowl and the belt the belt was made of foam and I glued the skirt into it. Mm. Um, so the belt, I took some liberties with, I just wanted to kind of add some dimension. I did a lot of geometric cuts into it to kind of match the fabric. Um, and then I made a fake pocket which is i think my favorite detail of the cosplay you can see in some of the shots because she has this giant pocket on one of her sides in a lot of the art and i made a fake foam pocket covered it with fabric tied it off and put it on the belt and i think it's my favorite detail there's a couple cool shots where it's really prominent and i'm just like oh yeah that was like such a i'm so glad i added that and took the time to do it um the cowl as i was just talking about and then got distracted sorry this is always how it goes for me um I painted. We ramble initial... on this podcast all the time. So oh, yeah, it's just... <laughs> but, but um, for the cowl, I did this base layer of red metallic paint, and when I was looking at it, I was like, mm, I was like, it doesn't quite match the suit, which always kind of drives me crazy when I look at my own stuff and I can see just a shade difference. I'm like, oh, it could be, it could be so, could be so much more exact. So I think I took either the belt or the cowl and my suit into like ACE hardware and was pulling paints and just like trying to find a good match. Um, so once I did, I actually didn't fully repaint the cowl. I just did different spots. So it gave it a, a little bit more dimension. Um, and then I did black oil paint shading with a paper towel. I just throw the black oil paint on the paper towel and rub it into all the divots and then wipe it off with a fresh paper towel and it just kind of soaks into those crevices and gives it like an extra pop of dimension. Um, oh. And then the size I got from Amazon, I did not make those. Those are real, but very dull. Like they are not sharp and not usable um, in any kind of combat yeah. situation, uh, which is safer. I've, right. used real, well, I've used real ones and it's always uncomfortable. Yeah. No, that would be terrible. That way, terrible. if you lose control of one, you know, you won't lose something, you know, like your nose or something. Well, exactly. Once I was training with one and I and I fell. And so because I didn't want to dent the, the floor at the dojo, which was stupid, right. me, I should have just dropped the stupid thing. Luckily, I didn't stab myself, which is a bonus. Yeah, that is but, like. But, but the, 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 the bounce back that it had on my elbow, the blues was, was great. It was, oh, was, I believe it. Yeah. Fantastic. I'm like, all right, good. I mean, they're not lightweight. Like the ones I had, because I, I borrowed my friend's Electra. Um, and then I also did the Electra Daredevil. And by the end of like the shoot, I mean, I, like my arms were a little tired from yeah, just holding yeah, them, yeah. posing, all of that. But yeah, it was a really fun one to make. It had been on my list for a really long time. Uh, so it was really fun to finally bring it, bring it into the world. And I'm actually reshooting it. I still have a bunch of pictures left to share, but I am going to reshoot it again, actually next weekend with one of my, one of my good friends and photographers I work with all the time, Cortex Studios. Um, so I shot it with Cooper Burns initially, who is also wonderful. I enjoy working with both of them so much and they both do fantastic work. Um, but I always like seeing um, everyone, what the, what the spin ends up being, right? What the, what the look ends up being because every photographer has their own style. So it's always really fun to have a variation of images. So um, I'm really excited about that. Um, and I'm excited to have even more photos of it because it was it was a good one. And there's a couple of things I'm actually, I saw in the photos that I was like, mm, I don't know how, I, how much I like that. I'm, I'm gonna go back and just clean up a couple of things. So a couple of things I did is the pants weren't loose enough for me. They kind of clung to the Zente suit underneath and so they didn't flow. So I got a different pair of like black harem pants. Um, I didn't like how the strips when they were tied looked a little bit blocky. So I went back in and I cut them thinner and cut them actually into two pieces. So they're gonna really like flow and fall. And then I'm gonna restyle the wig because the bun fell a little bit and I really wanted it high like hers is. So not huge changes, but like little niche things that honestly other people may not notice at all. But um, I, they, I looked at, you know, I was looking at the photos and my creative eye immediately goes to, hmm, maybe you could, maybe you could redo that part or, or update this part, so. Awesome, yeah, I can't wait to see. clinic here on cosplay. 
Yeah, I mean, the work that goes into I'm, it. I'm just amazed. Like, forget about how good her, her cosplay looks because it always looks awesome. I'm just amazed at the patience all these people all have because I, I wouldn't well, have that. Be, about this, the amount of work that goes into it, it seems like you know we see a couple of pictures and we see a few seconds of what seems yeah. to be weeks or months of work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that yeah. this is it's the culmination is all we see, but the process seems to be yeah. very intricate. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I really have been meaning to post more of the work in progress stuff because I know people really like it, and I think it's really helpful to see the work that goes into it too. Um, but I mean, I've just been—I've been doing way too much. If I'm being honest, I had to really slow down in the last few months in terms of how many projects I was trying to do and the rate I was trying to do them at, and. Um, it's been it's been a lot better since I've slowed down. Like I'm I started to get to the point where I was stressing about the process instead of enjoying it. And I was like, well, hold on, this is not yeah. what I want. I was like, yeah. this is this is yeah. my fun thing. I this is your hobby. Be, it shouldn't be, yeah, it shouldn't be exactly it shouldn't be a stressor. So yeah. um, but it's been good, it's been good, and I'm really glad that I have my upgraded Daredevil getting shot soon. And I will probably do more photos of She Hulk since you know. The photos that we have it turned out great. I'm very happy with them, but it would have been nice to shoot it at the location we intended instead of, you know, yeah, in a corner yeah. of my house. So um, that'll that'll be happening at some point soon. And that's something I want to get into a habit of doing more anyway is reshooting stuff that, you know, I have, you know, my Dove cosplay has been shot multiple times. My Green Lantern Canary has been shot multiple times, but there's a lot of other cosplays I've worn like once. And I'm like, no, they need more love than that. There are so many, so many hours of blood, sweat and tears put into them. They, they need their moment in the spotlight a little longer. <laughs> you know, you know what we need to do for Brooke Downey? We need to clone her. Like, you know, the movie Multiplicity with Michael Keaton? Oh, right. Yeah. That's, that's what we need to do. This way one can work that on the cosplay great. stuff. One can work on, you know, yeah. Well, well, as, as, to... as, as long as we don't get the clone of the clone, the one there at the end who's like, you know, not quite all there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, right. Yeah. <laughs> but no yeah both both cosplays the she-hulk and and the daredevil turned out great and uh, thank you and uh, i can't wait to see the 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 updated shots as well uh, of, of daredevil and eventually she-hulk when you when you redo that one um great stuff uh great insight into the whole process uh, i think it's fantastic and like i said i, I got nothing but respect for not only the the, the creativity but the patience, because uh, I'm in terms of I'm short on both. So uh, anybody that has both in that in that supply, uh, I am I am very fond of. And then of course, when Brooke um, sees uh, She Hulk, she can she can send us her thoughts, yes. and we will relay them uh, to you uh, on the show. Um, but um, Brooke, thanks for coming on and talking about those two uh, Marvel cosplays that you did. Which Absolutely. Segways nice into our review. Uh, we hope we will have uh, Brooke back anytime, multiple times. It's just when we can schedule her, she's busy, as you as you just heard. <laughs> so whenever Brooke can come on and, and talk with us, uh, it, it's always a pleasure, and we look forward to it every time. And we hope it happens uh, more frequently. Uh, but, Me too. <laughs> but we thank her for coming on with us. And so what we're going to do now is let her plug her social media stuff. Then we'll take our break, and when we come back, it'll just unfortunately be me and Donnie, but we'll do our She Hulk, uh, <laughs> remainder of our She Hulk review. Right. So, Brooke, before you leave us, yeah, uh, share your social media plugs and tell us where we can find you. So, I'm Tati Khaleesi, one word, no underscores, no, no punctuation, uh, on Instagram, Patreon, and Vero, and mm -hmm. then, um, my Twitter is tatted underscore Khaleesi. The one that like threw a wrench into, <laughs> into having uh, the same, the exact same handle on all platforms. What about TikTok? To, oh, thank you. TikTok is also tatted Khaleesi one word. Yeah. So same as Instagram, same as a uh, Patreon and Barrow. Perfect. Well, there's a lot of cosplayers on TikTok. That, that like for yes. social media seems to be made for TikTokers. I mean, for uh, cosplayers, so. Yeah, it, it's it's very fun. I definitely, TikTok's one of those things I really have to be in the mood to do because it is so much work. Um, mm -hmm. But when I am- You use the sounds well, though. I'll say that. Thank you. So definitely follow Brooke and be nice. That's the only, that's the only thing I ask. Be, be, be nice. Don't be an idiot because we don't want to send <laughs> so in, 
We don't want to send idiots over to over the book. That's right. Send, yeah. We want to send again, them. every once in a while, I see a comment, and I'm like, I'm gonna wash somebody's mouth out. <laughs> so, oh yeah. I appreciate it because. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Some people get absolutely There's a way wild. to compliment somebody with, with, with like common sense and decorum. Yeah, and yeah. Just, like, just use logic. You yeah, know? it's like, you know, like <laughs> think before you click enter or send or whatever the hell you click. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, go there and, and be polite and be nice. And uh, if you do that, you can tell her we send you. If you don't, then don't tell her. <laughs> then you don't know them. Yeah, yeah. Or we don't know you. So there, there it is. But follow Brooke and support her stuff because we do. And uh, we look forward to uh, having her back soon. But we're going to take a break now. And on the other side, we'll review She-Hulk episodes eight and nine. Stay tuned. So don't go anywhere. What's up, everyone? It's the Emerald Enthusiast. For all of your multiverse viewing and listening needs, check out our shows, which include Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, Power Rangers, the Marvel Universe, and the DC Universe, including the Emerald Echo Podcast. You can check us out on Podbean, and remember to subscribe right here on YouTube. That's the Multiverse Musings Podcast Network, from the first podcast to the last. And we're back. Indeed we are. And as promised, after our little interview with uh, Brooke about our cosplays, we are going to review and discuss the last two episodes, episode eight and nine of season one of She-Hulk. So, Donnie, where does episode eight take us? I know where it takes us, but for the benefit of our viewing and listening audience, where does it take us? The episode is called Ribbit and Rip It. It was an absolutely hilarious episode because we are introduced to Leapfrog, Mm. who employs Jen as his lawyer Mm. because he is suing because his suit malfunctioned while he was using it. And I really, my, (laughs) when he said you forgot about the guard frog. When he was like apprehending those thugs, I lost it. What did you think about that, that like first scene where we saw, saw him? I say, you know what's actually really fun? I'm like, he actually looks really good. Yeah. Surprisingly, they made that character work because I'm like, really? Yeah. Yeah. They did. And I, I mean, you know, he's, they adapted him pretty well. He's, you know, more portly in the comics because he's more frog like. But what they did, I think, worked. And, Obviously, a much more minor character, but the series. Yeah. Um, so, and it also put Jen in a very precarious position because, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jacobson is mm-hmm. being sued because he's the one who made the costume. Right. And so now she is representing Leapfrog against the person who is making her costumes. Right. That was, that was a funny dynamic, I, I will say. That made me laugh um, because it puts, again, like you said, it puts a strain on on uh, uh, Jen, right? And her relationship with him, which she needs because he's the only one that's been able to design clothes for her that, that don't rip every time she... Uh... Although he insult, and now I'm, I'm blanking exactly what it was, when she told him that you know she was representing leapfrog and he called her something like a greasy cow or something like that. And I'm like, you're lucky she doesn't punch her head off your shoulder. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but you know, as much as it puts Jen in an un- uncomfortable position, what it what this lawsuit does is it brings in a particular character. Yeah, and this particular character is my favorite in the history of the Marvel Comics fandom. The best ca- the best character in the history of characters, as one of my deranged former co-hosts used to say, uh, well, not about this character, but in general he used to say that, but or a variation of that. But Matt Murdock himself is representing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm happy for you. I'm at, happy for myself. I'm happy for all the legitimate Daredevil fans out there. 
I'm not happy for all the dude bros who for the last six weeks have been going, I'm only watching this for Daredevil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, <laughs> that's a very good invitation of them. <laughs> that's go on TikTok. That's all you're going to hear. Okay. I'm, I'm watching the show, <laughs> but they're back next week. Watch of, course, of course they are. Um, yeah, exactly. But Matt Murdock, he is one of the most interesting alter egos in comics. If you, you know, I, I thought to myself, if you had to read a comic where, let's say, all the like super heroics, the costume stuff, the battles were taken out, could you read a like limited series that just followed Matt Murdock in the way he uses his abilities in his day to day life? Yeah. It would be interesting. I a think lot, so. A lot of heroes wouldn't be, you know. I think I agree. But he would be. He, he's one of the most developed characters outside of being Daredevil. You know, and their bands are in the courtroom. Oh, oh, it was awesome. <laughs> the back and forth was just fantastic. Yeah, and and of course, there are people out there that are like, oh, you know, he was too humorous this time. He, you know, and I'm like, look, it's a different show. He's at a different place in his life. He's obviously happier than he was at the Netflix series. Yeah. It might not even be the exact same Daredevil. Exactly. And we may not be talking about the exact same version of Daredevil just because it's the same actor. Right. I, I really like the fact that I don't want to skip over, you know, what happened in the courtroom. But when, you know, eventually they do clash, she, Hulk, and Daredevil. And when she unmasks him, she references his uh, costume as being ketchup and mustard colored, which we, <laughs> we, accurate. we we've called it that before. Accurate. Yeah, I mean, it's accurate. Yeah. Um, but you know, that, that first interaction between the two of them, I got to say, Donnie, just with the, um, the way he moved, yeah. uh, you know, was, was very much a little bit, it was more high flying and fantastical, I think, than in the Netflix series. But of course, that comes with being on Disney Plus with an MCU budget. Yeah. Right. And he seems like he's also, you know, a more veteran of being Daredevil at this point. And I, and, oh, he, yeah. But Donnie, they translated that costume perfection. And, you know, before we saw it for the first time, I was like, Okay, the red one works because it's red, and it's right. red, you know, yeah. when red is not corrupted by the rest of Montreal Canadian covers, it's a gray color, uh, so it'll work. Uh, you like how I had to throw a shot in there, um, <laughs> but but you know, but uh, yellow and red, eh, yeah. I don't know if that's going to work. And sure enough, it works. It yeah, it worked. The, I think the shade they used for the red. You know, it's different, and I think that it works. And just everything we saw here, I, I never doubt Marvel Studios when it comes to adapting costumes because they've been doing it so long, so well, that when I hear that a character's coming, I'm like, uh, you know, I have I have confidence that the character's going to look. And, and you know what's good about There's One little exception here at the end of the, of the end of the finale that we'll talk about, but that's not for now. So. Right. And, and the other thing that was really cool, we talked about their banter, in the courtroom, but their banter when they were battling yes. during that misunderstanding was awesome. Yes. Yes. Uh, and there was the part where uh, after she realizes who he like when she takes off the mask mm -hmm. and they stop they stop fighting and he puts it back on and she's like who are you anyway? Devil, that what she called him? Devil yeah, she devil, like devil she, man yeah. or, or, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. She called and, him like the, the the yellow devil or something. Yeah, yellow. Yeah, and he's like, yeah. I'm daredevil. And then as he as soon as he says I'm daredevil, the little cue of the Netflix right. theme plays. Yeah, and you look, heard that. Yeah, and I was like, you know, giddy. And most people online did not complain about hearing the Netflix theme. No. If this was another character, I saw some people. They're like, "Oh, well, he, she didn't know who Daredevil was." Yeah, I'm like, they're in Los Angeles. 
Yeah, why would she? Why would she hear uh, all the way across the country? I don't think she's <laughs> list, I don't think she's reading up on news in Hell's Kitchen. Right. Why would she, yeah. But no, even so, the point I'm making is, I didn't hear complaints about which theme was used. Uh, of course. Uh, yet, if this was a character yeah. on the other side of the aisle, you right. know, people would have, well, why are you using that theme when there's this theme? You know, yeah. Didn't you hear know, any complaints about Daredevil fighting in the hallway again. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine? I love that. Can you imagine, Nani, if if there were there there were there were Marvel fans and Daredevil fans complaining, why didn't they use the the, the, the Ben Affleck movie theme or whatever? Well, you know, it's like really like it's, nobody cared. Like it was nice that the theme was there, but had they created a new theme for him, I would have been fine for it. Mm -hmm. Like whatever they wanted to do, I was just happy that I was getting Daredevil. Exactly, and I really liked when. <laughs> to rescue Jacobson, which by the way, leapfrog kidnaps, kidnaps Jacobson mm. and their banter inside and the, the way that the show kind of showcased their different methodologies of yeah. dealing with, you know, the villains. Where like, oh, I'll just go in there and smash it, you know, I'll just... Yeah. Daredevil is, you know, stealth and and uh, and uh, um, and strategy, whereas Jen's like, I'm just going to go in there like, you know, like a bull in a china shop, and they both work, by the way, because right. you know, yeah. and he's Daredevil. But I, I like the fact that they were kind of arguing in the beginning about which way, you know, do we do this? And when he is like, "Just let me do my thing," and she does that little dance, I'll do my thing. Yeah, I'm, yeah, that was funny. A dozen times, and I was just cracking up. That little thing that she did was awesome. Yeah, and 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 um, you know that dynamic about the 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 back and forth about. The, the way to do it yeah reminds me of the early batman superman comic by jeff Loeb and and and, and mcginnis way back mm -hmm. in uh, mm -hmm. 0203 or whatever it was yeah. you know, they had a lot of those discussions of you know like yeah. my way or my uh, this is all so right. that was very familiar um um but it's I like when Daredevil differentiated goons and henchmen. Yeah, that was that was funny. People use that, and I do it too. We kind of use them, you know, interchangeably, but they're not, you know. Right, right. There's there's a different methodology. Yeah. yeah. To both, but also what was pretty cool was when they were, and again, we saw Daredevil in the hallway, and that was really cool again because it was you know darkly lit, but yeah. you see a little bit of light, and he's he's kicking ass doing his thing. But then eventually when they're both fighting, you know, at the same time, there was this, as they're fighting, it's not, it's not negative banter, but it's positive. Like, oh, you'd get, you know, if you continue down this track, they're talking to the villains. And yeah. they're like, if you continue down this track, you're going to get charged for this, this, and this. And he's like, oh, I thought it was this, this, you know, so they're, they're kind of comparing notes on what they'd be charged with. Right. <laughs> which I thought was hilarious, right? And I really love when she broke the fourth wall and like looked looked you know directly into the camera and was like, boy, this guy's really doing it for me. <laughs> yeah, she's like, there's chemistry here, right? You know, I'm not the one that feels that. Definitely chemistry, and we'll we'll see how that ends in just a minute. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, <laughs> so they, of course, take care of business. Um, yes. And you know, all the all that humor during the fight, and I know people are gonna get get take this all out of whack. It kind of reminded me of like Batman sixty six, minus the Biff Bam Pow. Right. Yeah. Kind of because Batman and Robin used to talk in the in the midst of of you know being the crap out of hooligans and henchmen, right? So right. So I just got a kind of flashback to that. <laughs> uh, again, it would have been funny. It made me think about Falcon when he was talking in uh, in uh, Civil War to Spider Man, and he's like, you know, I don't know if you've ever been in a fight before, but there's usually not. This much talking, right? Yeah, but wouldn't it have been funny, Donnie, if, if the She Hulk show kind of like made a, a, a gag about the Biff Bam Pow kind of thing? Yeah, if they put it in as a, as a joke reference. Oh, I thought, it would totally work. Yeah, I, I, because, I, thought, I mean, that's that's what this show is, right? You know? And I'm sure it would have pissed off a lot of a lot of the, the, the dude bros, but the dude bros, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, it would have been funny. I would have liked it. So, you know, I they, am done. They used pal, Biff, bam, ooh, doo, 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 yeah, 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 seriously. Um, but no, so they, you know, they take care of business and they're back on the roof and, 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 you know, they're both commenting on, 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 while they work together and how much fun that was. 
And uh, and so, you know, Matt Murdock suggested, he goes, you know, next time I'm in town, yeah, maybe okay. I could take you to dinner. dinner. She's like, yeah, why don't we skip all that and just go back sure to the she the form. Yeah. Um, and uh, they go back to her place. If they thought the fighting was fun, they did something else that yeah. apparently was more fun. Yeah. And I would venture to guess that it was. It, it, it yeah. was. Uh, but they, they didn't show it was not inappropriate anyway. right 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 it was very well, tastefully done very tasteful and and funny you know her trying to get this costume off was, <laughs> yeah no, yeah <laughs> was really um, funny as well as him leaving the apartment the next morning yeah he did the walk of shame uh right? that's, that's... i don't think that was i'm pretty sure that wasn't the walk of shame. oh no no from from his perspective <laughs> he had a pimp in his step baby i was gonna sit yeah. there with that much pimp she um, also seemed pleased as well. Yeah, I mean, they're both morning, so. mutually beneficial, buddy, which is, yeah, so. spoiler, is how that's supposed to work yeah. if, if things go well, right? It's supposed to be yeah. good for everybody uh, or both parties involved. Um, um, and, you know, I, I just want to say a lot of people, well, they turn, they turn Daredevil into an expletive. Now, you know, I won't say the word that the dude bros were using, <laughs> but folks, did you watch the Netflix series? I mean, he had a few uh, occurrences with other with different women. Exactly, it's happened right? in comics before too. Like, like, like in the Netflix series, uh, I think it was a flashback. But he and Electra kind of broke into this rich person's house, and on their kitchen floor. Had a little bit of an entanglement, let's call it. <laughs> uh, I use polite terminology. There we go. Uh, it, was, it, was a legal, it was it was a non legal entanglement. I will see. Yeah. I was the lawyer <laughs> part of it back into it. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, very yeah. horrible. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, but yeah, and so, but that's not the and, end. And the comics, again, it's like, yeah. Uh -huh. like hello, read a Daredevil comic, for God's sake. Exactly. Pick, yeah. Use your energy on something positive rather than getting on TikTok and making <clears> a <throat> you know video inventing week after week. Just go out and read a Daredevil story. But I love this. I love this episode. Is there anything else you want to bring up about it? Well, no, we, we do have to bring up the fact that Both, yeah. Jen at after all this happens with Daredevil, she goes to accept uh, an award for female lawyer of the year and mm see the plan of intelligentsia yeah which is which is awful they've stolen a bunch of information about her including the video that we referenced in the last episode on this podcast they have taped um one of her you know intimate interactions with josh yeah and they actually show this at the at the you know on the wall of at the, the yeah yeah, at the, the award. The gala, the video wall, yeah. The gala, yeah. And so, obviously, I mean, that is just inexcusably heinous. And for the first time, we really see Jen lose control. And I like the fact that after she smashes out of the building, she looks towards the camera and for the first time seems confused and kind of seems like the savage She-Hulk. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. Like, she seems, like, really savage yeah. at this point. Yeah. Obviously, you know, she is more in, in control of herself than Bruce, but anyone can have their buttons pushed under the right circumstances. And obviously, you know, online harassment, online sexual harassment, you know, any woman would be upset it's about It's a thing, and it happens, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 So uh, I, felt, I, felt, I felt horrible for her at that yeah, event. So, yeah. And the fact that, you know, her parents were there. So yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I just, yeah, I felt, I, again, it really moved you emotionally what was happening to the, the, the hero in this story. Yeah, amidst of all the humor, there was some serious. Yeah. very serious stuff. Uh, but I love this episode, Donnie. I, Likewise. I thought it was one of my favorite, uh, and I, you know me, we've, we've, we've been pretty positive throughout this whole series, right? But I gotta say, I think that was my favorite. And look, it's part of it's a daredevil bias. But I think that was my favorite episode of the series. Oh, I loved, I loved the last two episodes. You know, to me were well, 
Let's go on to the last. So episode. Are you are you ready to rate this ep- this episode before we move on to the last one? What was it? Uh, was it we letter grade it? Yes. Yo, an A. It was. I, I loved it. Yeah. I, I, oh, it this, gave yeah. you perfect introduction with Daredevil. It gave you lots of character development with She Hulk. Lots of funny moments, but at the same time, again, like uh, at any episode that comes before the finale, right? It put the hero in peril. Yeah. So, it did everything it needed to do. Yeah, I thought it was a great intro. Like I said, as a Daredevil fan, I was immensely pleased on all fronts. The costume, the way he moved, the banter between him and Jen, everything. I loved it all. Uh, and then with Jen, I, I got to tell you, when they had that non-legal entanglement, you know, Donnie, I, 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 pulled, a, I pulled a Dolph Ziggler. And I said, if, you know, it should have been me. <laughs> as as you know, so I was a little jealous of Daredevil. But uh, overall, I'm gonna say this is an A plus for me. Um, but yeah, all right. So the, the, the season, the as of now, season finale. Right. So episode number nine, whose show is it anyway? We see that Jen opens up in custody of the Department of Damage Control, and she has also lost her job due to her outburst. Right. So we also see that Nikki and Pug are able to infiltrate Intelligentsia, where they learn that Phelps is helping Blonsky and Hulk King as the abomination. So (laughs) this episode was, I think, the most She-Hulk episode that they had, and that's fitting. Because right. she goes, you know, eventually she learns where intelligentsia is. She goes and confronts them. She thinks initially that, you know, Blonsky is, you know, gone back to the dark side, so to speak. All of a sudden, the Hulk shows up, and there's chaos, and Hulk King gets starts to get Hulk powers because he's injecting himself with Jen's blood, and she's like, wait a minute. There's too much chaos going on here, which is what I was thinking. I was like, wait a minute. There's what is going on. We got to slow this down a little bit. And we see that Jen decides to do the biggest fourth wall break. And I absolutely love the visual of her coming through Uh, the screen, the menu screen, coming through the screen, you know, the, uh, the, the, the drop down of the, like the, the Disney plus. Yeah. That, that was off. The way they did that. Would you believe, Donnie, that I actually thought there was something wrong with my screen? I'm like, how did I get yeah, that? Yeah, my here? wife did too. My wife did too. That's why it was, so, that's what sets this show apart. They did so many innovative things like that. You know, there's always the criticism out there that Marvel is just Biff Bal Pam, you know, or, yeah. or, and uh, maybe Pam. <laughs> But that that you know that it's that it's all fighting and it, that you know there's eventually a big fight and there's a resolution. That's not how this went. Yeah. And I, <laughs> by the way, she cracked me up. She's like, you know, I'm the She Hulk. You know, I smash bad guys. I smash bad endings. And sometimes I murder. <laughs> the look on her face. I was, I was dying. <laughs> um, see, me and She Hulk would get along. I think. Me yeah. and Jen would get along. The fact that, and you know, hopefully you've watched the episode before you you listen to this podcast. Yeah, it makes sense. The fact that you know it's revealed that Kevin, which we you know initially we think it's got to be Kevin Feige. Yeah, she she actually goes to Marvel Studios. Yeah, she it's goes to Marvel to Studios. Yes, yes. And and I felt bad for some people who were like hearing impaired because they said that it gave away the the, the big revelation because it's. It's spelled K, you know, K E V I N with initials. Yeah. And so, like, they were spelling it that before you actually saw the robot Kevin on the screen. Okay. Uh, yeah. Again, I just heard that. So, sorry for people, you know, who had that course, experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so she, you know, confronts this version of Kevin. And, you know, obviously, you know, she has some issues with the way the show is going. She mentioned, she's like, Where, when are we going to get the X Men? Which I'm like, I, I, yeah, I literally, yeah. I thought, I'm not just going to, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. it, it, that is the first reference, like, I mean, yes, we saw, you know, Professor X in 
uh, and we heard the theme, the theme in, uh, yeah. in uh, um, Ms. Marvel. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Marvel. Yeah, Ms. Marvel. But this, I think that's the first time we ever heard the word X-Men in the MCU. Right. I don't think we've heard X-Men. I, I agree. I think you're right. Yeah, I think that's the first time we've heard the word X-Men. Uh, I agree. You're right. Yeah. And I also like when Kevin was like, yeah, you need to change back because you're expensive which obviously a CGI character is. And he's like, but do it off screen because the CGI team has moved on and you hear the Wakanda Forever music play because <laughs> they're off, you know, working on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All so brilliant. It was all so funny. This is what the She-Hulk comics are about. Right, and Marvel made fun of itself. You know, Kevin Feige. Yeah. You yeah. know, he, a lot of the complaints that it, it's for, too, a little bit too formulaic. And at yeah. times it can be, I agree, that there's certain times where it is. Sure. But, 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 you know, She-Hulk brings that up. You know, Jen brings that up. And so they ignore it. And I like that Kevin had the hat. I, I, think, <laughs> I was dying with the hat. Right. Yeah, I couldn't stop laughing. Um, but I just thought this was ingenious. And we didn't even talk about this part, Donnie. Your opening credits were done in the style of the 70s TV show. And I loved it. Oh, yeah, you're right. We should mention that. That was... That was ingenious. That And it looked so good. I mean, it looked like it was something that had been filmed in the 70s. Donny, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I was this close to popping in the, 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 my DVDs of the, of the original show. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it looked really good. And just the way that that was done. And, you know, they did homages all over this show to... You know, the incredible Hulk's history. And uh, <laughs> I also like the fact, I got to say that Daredevil was in this episode. But he shows up after all the action is over. And he's like, really? Yeah. And, you know, Titan so why am I, no, I, why am I here? You know? <laughs> right, exactly. Again, very innovative, very funny. And I, I just, I really loved where they went with this. I will say, I think that there should have been more repercussions for Intelligentsia for, again, what they did to She-Hulk in the previous episode. Yeah. I would have liked to seen a little bit more SmackDown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but just the way that this played out. Um, yeah, I just, and, and you know, for Jen, yeah, get I, back to a happy place. I do, yeah, and I like the fact that the parents, when they're at that family dinner, are yes. trying to groom uh, her and, and Matt together. Like they're talking right. about kids already. <laughs> the parents are. Exactly. Already. Yeah. But oh, the one negative that I have, and it's uh, so Hulk comes in. I think I know where you're going with this. I think and, I and he says before and before I tell you everything, I want to introduce you to my my, my son, who is of course uh Star. Yeah. yeah. Here's my problem. It's twofold. One, it was done so casually. That's something that should not have been done that casually. I would agree. Two, I didn't like the way he looked. Likewise. He, he did not look good. That being said, they can solve that easily. So. Of course. But I'm just saying, I, from what we have to judge right now, those are the two things I didn't like. So I hope yeah. that when, when, when they do a World War Hulk series or, or movie, that his look is fixed because it looked... At first glance, it looked terrible. Uh, yeah, I'm going to agree. But aside from that, everything else in the episode, yeah. I absolutely love. Um, yeah. And if, if we do get a season two of this, I really hope Dare, Daredevil comes back. Yeah, and I hope she goes on his show. Look, and I'm somebody, sure. speaking of non-legal entanglements, I'm Dare Lecter forever from the first non-legal entang entanglement to the last. However... <laughs> I'll make a little bit of an exception for a few yeah. uh, one shots with uh, yeah. with with, with uh, Jen. Yeah, you like to see the one shots? Get it anyway. <laughs> um, I tried to think, yeah. uh, you know, because everybody does shift names. Yeah. I can't really come up with a good because I'm like she devil. That, that. <laughs> yeah, <Jen. laughs> uh, Dulk. Uh, uh, <laughs> you can't put Matt and Jen because then it's men and it's like. Then well, it's well, <laughs> What? <laughs> um, even the dog that's apparently in the background agrees. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, but no. Well, like, Doc. 
I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I've been I've been trying to come up with something. It's not working. Their Electra works better. Oh yeah. See, there you go. Yeah. yeah. That's all. But 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 again, for a few one shots, I'm cool with Jen and Matt. You know, having some fun. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, I, I really enjoyed this episode. And in terms of the series as a whole, okay. First, let's rate the episode. So this episode, what would you rate it, Donna? A, a plus. I love, like I said, even with, you know, my issues with Scar and, again, not really feeling like Intelligentsia got exactly what was coming to them, at least to, you know, the certain degree that I think they needed to, still I'm going to give it an A. Okay. An yeah. A or A plus. I mean, it was just, it was so much fun to see her so, break. So, so for, all the, for all those things you mentioned as negatives, I, I'm not going to give it an A or an A plus. I'm going to give it an A minus. Okay. So still really solid. Just those things. That's fair. That's fair. That scar. That, that scar is really epic. Mean, come on. Yeah. You were going in such a good direction, and that. No, but it. again, like I said, I mean, yeah, if he takes his hair down, put some makeup on his yeah, face. I, I, yeah, it's fixable. But for now, it's right, fixable. right. However, on the whole, as an MCU show. This is either my favorite or my second favorite. For me, this surpassed uh, WandaVision, which had been my previous favorite, to be my favorite. I just, I love how innovative this show was. And I knew because, again, I'm familiar with the She Hulk comics. I've been a fan since 89. I knew what they could do with this character. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to. It was long overdue to be introduced into the so, MC. So I'm going to do a tentative top three. Okay. My favorite. Uh, um, MCU series so far. Again, this order could change upon further rewatches, but right now, here's where we are. Okay, because it was such a surprise to me, and I didn't think I was going to have this reaction to it. Miss Marvel is number one. Okay, number two is She Hulk because of all the things we just mentioned, plus Tatiana Maslany. On the list. <laughs> and third, because it was kind of like Die Hard in the MCU. Plus, it has my Earth 19 wife, Haley Steinfeld, on the list, is number three. So that's my top three. Uh, so, yeah, there it is Miss Marvel, She Hulk, and uh, Hawkeye on my top three. What's your top three, Danny? I'm going to go She-Hulk and then WandaVision and then Moon Knight as number fair, four. Fair enough. Huh? Number four would be, by the way, Miss Marvel. So close okay. between Miss Marvel and, and Moon Knight. I like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, Moon Knight would be my number four. The ending just got a little, there was a little too much. The hip ball. The hip ball threw me off. Um, <laughs> but I digress. Um, so yeah, so all in all, uh, four thumbs up because two for me, two for you for She-Hulk as right. a series. And uh, is there anything else you want to mention before we wrap this up? No, I'm just, I'm glad to have been able to podcast about this show with you because again, I've been a fan of this show for such a long time. And I remember liking this aspect of She-Hulk and watching her finally be adapted because I've always wanted to see this character in live action. It was done so well. So thank you, Marvel Studios. Agreed. Um, but uh, that brings our She-Hulk uh, series discussion to an end. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. For now. It. For now. For now, at least. Uh, hopefully there's more. But I'm sure we'll be talking about, regardless of whether there's another season, I'm sure we'll be talking about She-Hulk in live action again at some point too. But until that time, if you want to talk to Donia and I about either Marvel Comics or the MCU, you can on social media. Donnie, where do we track you down? You can find me on Twitter or TikTok as the Emerald Enthusiast. Let's talk comics. Let's talk collectibles. Let's talk Green Lantern. I'm also searching right now for the Marvel Legends She-Hulk and posting my videos to my YouTube channel. So check them out. Awesome. If you want to chat with me, it's at Adam underscore Lee's fan on Twitter. We have a 
Twitter page for our network, which is at MMNPDC. We also have a Facebook group, which is listed in the link below. Click that, I will add you. And we can continue the conversation there if you so choose. But until next time, remember that She-Hulk is forever. Never. From her first non-legal entanglement to the last. So long, everybody. So long, everyone. <laughs>